I'm Alex, School Plates Coordinator, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to our first ProVeg UK School Plates online workshop of 2024. And today it's all about beans and lentils. <clears throat> so you've probably already just said hello at the side with your name and organisation. If you haven't, just a little reminder to do that. Our recipes today feature hearty and comforting winter favourites with beans and lentils at the centre of the dish and sometimes as an added boost to a flavourful dip or a dessert. Before we get started on this workshop for real, I just need to remind you that it will be recorded and available on our ProVeg UK YouTube channel. So we'll start with a bit of an introduction to ProVeg for those of you who haven't joined us before. We are ProVeg UK, part of ProVeg International, which is a global organisation with more than 200 staff in 12 countries across four continents. And if you saw on the previous slide, there were some little orange blobs. Those are our school food programmes in UK, Germany and Poland. And so what are our aims? Well, our mission is to replace 50% of animal products globally with plant-based and cultivated foods by 2040. And in the UK, we choose to focus on school food uh, in order to make this healthier and more sustainable, more planet friendly, but to give great plant-based food choices on the menu for children, which can save our partners money as the ingredients are often cheaper. As you know, our favorite phrase, chickpeas are cheaper than chicken. And also they're more inclusive as different faiths and diets and allergies can be accommodated better with these recipes. <clears throat> and just to touch on a few of those things, you can see a nice little comparison here with a traditional spaghetti bolognese versus a plant-based spaghetti bolognese using lentils and soya protein instead of the traditional beef. And um, you can see at the bottom that the plant-based one has almost exactly the same uh, amount of protein. It's 27% cheaper, 87% uh, lower in saturated fat, has more than double the fibre, which is really important nowadays because a lot of children uh, don't get, just don't get anywhere near enough fibre. Um, and it has less than a third of the carbon emissions of the spaghetti bolognese. So it's really brilliant to have these options available to caterers, but also to children, and they taste delicious. So that's a really important fact. Uh, as well to consider. Um, in 2018, ProVeg looked like this. We worked with this one council, and there it is, the middle of the UK. And now it's a bit of a different story. We're working with a quarter of all authorities in the UK. So as you can see, it's peppered with lovely uh, little green blobs there. So please stay ahead of the curve with us because this is the way things are moving. And here you'll see a face you recognize, Chris Packham, our wonderful ambassador, showing you our recipe book and the guide to school plates, uh, which you can download if you go to proveg.com. You can download the free guide to the school plates program and our current 35 recipes. But the recipes are the gift that keeps giving because we have 35 more recipes coming out very soon this year. So I'm sure you're all waiting with bated breath to see what, what's going to be in that book. They will have a full nutritional profile and a cost breakdown for you in there as well. So in the meantime, we love to celebrate the amazing work you're already doing to make school dinners healthier and more sustainable. So don't forget to send in your lunch menu as you may well win an award with us. And here's an example on the previous slide of a gold award winning menu. <clears throat> on this menu, you can see it, the uh, dish has been made to sound attractive and delicious. We've got Sri Lankan sweet potato and coconut curry, smoky jackfruit jambalaya. And both of these recipes, which are plant-based, are at the top of the menu, which makes it more likely that they'll be chosen. And this menu had Save the Planet Tuesday instead of a meat-free day, which 
the description of the day, it makes a difference. As we know, it gets your community a bit better behind the whole idea. Um, so pushing them to the front and top of the menu makes them more likely to be chosen. Descriptions and placement, meat reduction, these are all ways of nudging more positive behaviors towards getting kids to choose those plant-based options on the menu and ways of earning your bronze, silver and gold award with us. In fact, we're still absolutely walking on air from last uh, week when we celebrated the achievements of no less than 24 award winners and our awards only began last year. So do send in your menus for feedback and you might be the next one to win an award. Another key thing that we do is in-person workshops for local authority partners. So here you can see we're working with Hackney Council <clears throat> and we had lots of schools coming together for this workshop and the result was really motivating Hackney Council to get involved and sort of stuck in with the schools themselves uh, who they contacted and the schools then uh, directly got in contact with their caterers and it resulted in several more bronze awards for schools uh, menus in Hackney. So it's really positive effect it has on both councils organising this, gets people behind it, gets people understanding how easy it is to do and how small these tweaks can be. So do get in touch with us if this applies to you. Uh, if you are a small uh, trust, you can get together with some other groups and we'll come and do a workshop for you, um, which is only the cost of the ingredients and travel expenses. As with everything else we do, it's all free of charge. So that's a bit about us. And now it's all about beans and pulses. So here's a little legume learning or pulse practice for you. Pulses are part of the legume family. And you can see at the top, there are soybeans, peanuts, fresh peas and fresh beans, which are all legumes. And then underneath the pulses are the edible seeds of the legumes and they're dried before they're eaten. Pulse crops, of course, you know, they help decrease greenhouse gases, they increase soil health and they use less water than other crops. So they're just terrific all round. It's a win-win situation. Pulses also deliver high levels of potassium, magnesium, zinc, B vitamins and iron. And so we wanted to give you a few resources that you can use at any point <clears throat> or refer back to from the recording when you have a bit of time. We're part of the Beans is How Coalition, which is part of the SDG2 Advocacy Hub, coordinating the global campaign and advocacy to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goal, SDG2, which is to end hunger, to achieve food security and improve nutrition and to promote sustainable agriculture by 2030. Another date for your diary is February the 10th, because it's World Pulse Day. You can look up on the left there, lentils.org. There's a lot of information, some more recipes. And finally, Hodmadods is a really interesting British supplier of homegrown beans. And it's even better, of course, if you can source beans in the UK. So as you know, we get very excited at ProVeg about healthy plant-based menu options. And today we're boasting the benefits of beans and ladling on luscious, luscious lentils as your easy route to healthy, nutritious, low-cost meals made with truly sustainable ingredients. These are the recipes. We'll be doing homemade baked beans, curry club dal with toasted chickpeas and coriander yogurt, creamy pot pie, lemon and garlic dip, and sticky chocolate brownie. So uh, without further ado, I shall hand you over to our chef Polly who's leading the workshop today. Thank you. Hi everybody and thank you so much uh, Alex for the introduction. Welcome to our first 2024 online plant-based cookery in schools workshop and we're going to be looking at five new recipes uh, today. Um, so uh, just to introduce myself for uh, anybody that's new or first time today. My name's Polly Higginson and I am um, the chef trainer for School Plates. So I run these online workshops. Uh, I also help with recipe development and uh, come and carry out the in-person training that Alex was just uh, mentioning. 
Um, as well as the kind of practical side, I'm also the programme coordinator for Scotland and Northern Ireland. So hello, any Scottish local authorities that are on the call today. Um, my job is to kind of work with them and get them engaged in our programme. And yeah, yeah, based just outside of Edinburgh. Um, so let's begin uh, with our uh, with our recipes. Um, so we're going to look at yeah five different dishes, uh, some with uh, beans, some with lentils, and uh, I would say that these ingredients really are the backbones of our school plates recipes. Um, we are always looking at how we can best utilize these ingredients, how we can get them into uh, menus and working into dishes because they just have so many benefits. First, we're bringing in protein, a um, really, really strong source of plant-based protein. Um, and then, uh, yeah, lots of other kind of vitamins um, and minerals as well that come from them. And they really are incredibly economical, as Alex mentioned, and they can really, really uh, make a dish go um, take, taking the ingredients you have and really kind of bulk dishes out to make them go um, a really, really long way. Um, so the kind of key uh, ingredients that we look at that, that um, sorry, most popular in our recipes, we have our red lentils, uh, we have our white beans, um, and then within the white beans, we've got our butter beans, lovely and creamy, cannellini beans, um, again, creamy, uh, really, really kind of easy bean for the children that they kind of really enjoy. Uh, haricot beans, which we're going to be looking at today with our baked bean dish. Um, black beans, we really love. Again, um, they have a kind of sweet uh, taste to them. Uh, we use red lentils, we use chickpeas, and we also use, taken from chickpeas, uh, gram flour, which is the flour made from chickpeas, which again is an, another really great, um, really useful ingredient for yeah, increasing the nutrition in dishes and sometimes swapping it out for plain flour. Um, we've got some great recipes that we use uh, ground flour in. So they're kind of our core um, beans and lentils that we use. But I think we're really keen to always develop more um, because there, there are, you know, I was going to say hundreds, but, you know, different varieties um, and as we're looking always for new dishes and shifting our diet, we're looking at, yeah, what uh, new ingredients we can be better using. So um, we're gonna start with the baked beans. Um, now, probably this is a dish that is uh, incredibly uh, popular in the UK and on, in school food. It's on, um, I think, nearly every school menu that we look at. Um, has baked beans are a staple part of um of the school day and children absolutely love them the whole nation absolutely loves them and um, so we're going to look at making our own version today which are obviously kind of lower in sugar lower in salt and really really tasty really really easy and um again a really kind of cost effective recipe uh, for you so before I start with that, I think we're going to have our first poll question. Yes, please. Here we come. Do you have any other bean dishes on your menu apart from baked beans as a side dish? And we have, it's a, exactly an even split here. We've got half of you who say, yes, we do. And exactly the other half <laughs> say, not at the moment. So it's a completely down the middle, Polly. That's great. It would be really wonderful if you don't mind sharing. Oh, here we go. We've got three bean chili. Um, yeah, hearing dish, it's chilies again, a great one. Um, and one again that every children in particular would be quite familiar with beef goulash, I guess. Right. Brilliant. And that's probably got um beans uh through it as well. Um, um 
Mexican bean burrito in there. Sounds delicious. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, but so yeah, again, the kind of Mexican y dishes, again, something we're all quite familiar with. Um which is yeah, which is really good. And again, it like within the kind of Mexican cuisine and culture and South America, you know, beans still are a really, really staple part of the diet, particularly black beans. Um here we've got beanie pasta bake. That sounds really good. That sounds like a real winner. Um mixed bean salad, yeah, again, really good. Lentil and bean cottage pie brilliant as well and um, so it's great to see such a kind of diversity of uh yeah dishes out there and I guess like I said we're just really really passionate about getting more and more of these kind of dishes on the menu so let's start with uh homemade baked beans so we're using um I've got here uh dried beans uh harico is traditionally what they're made from um but you can use any white bean and uh yeah so just beautiful uh hard very very hard beans so we i'm just going to talk you through kind of cooking from scratch um the process um because our recipes we use we put tinned beans in all our recipes but when you're cooking um at scale and bulk like you all are and um, then being able to make dishes from scratch with the raw ingredients is the most kind of effective thing that you're able to do um, in terms of getting the most out of the ingredients. So I'm just going to talk you through the very simple steps of how you work um, with the, the, the very, very raw ingredient. The first thing that you do is you wash beans or lentils or any pulses that you're working with. Um, you know, you can be removing dirt, sometimes occasionally you can find small stones in them as well um, and so just wash them under lots of cold water um, and then the next thing that you're going to do is uh, allow them to soak um, to start the kind of rehydration process and getting the water to come back into them so um, with a bean like this and, and most uh, of the dried beans um, you'd be looking kind of six to eight hours in cold water um, a great one for doing overnight so the day before that you're going to cook the um, the beans leave them soaking in the kitchen under cold water um, another tip is to put a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda in which kind of helps extract um, some of the kind of gases out of the beans because we all know that is one of the side effects of eating beans is that they uh, can uh, sometimes cause a little bit of uh, gassiness so the bicarbonate of soda helps with that and it just also really helps um, kind of start to soften the beans. Um, as I was saying to Alex earlier um, when you're cooking your own beans you really want to make sure that they're cooked properly the worst thing is like an undercooked uh, bean and especially for children you want these to be just so so soft so really allowing yourself as much time as possible really helps with that and then it saves it on energy um, with the cooking um, time as well so wash the beans as I said leave them to soak overnight in cold water the next day come into the kitchen pour off that water um, and then uh, top them up with new water and then put them on the hob I'm going to show you because I did all of that process. I started soaking my beans last night. Um, I strained them off this morning and then I cooked these beans for an hour. And so I would say uh, the ratio too is that they've kind of doubled um, from, from the amount that I, I had. So I, this is, uh, is this, uh, let me think. I think I soaked 300 grams of beans, so I've got 600 grams of beans now. Um, and so with the baked beans, the key things that we really want to get are soft beans, a delicious sauce, and we want the beans to kind of really soak up um, the kind of tomato sweetness. And so again, the thing that can really help us just naturally is time and giving the beans plenty of time to kind of cook and take on those flavors as well. So uh, in our new recipe guide, which we, this is gonna be included, we give it 
from tinned beans. Um, but I've just talked you through kind of how to get these to the same stage as a tin bean. So these are kind of lovely and cooked. But now we're going to add them back to the pot. Um, really pop them back in. And we're going to give them cooking time to take on the flavour. Now, uh, that could be, you know, minimally kind of half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. But you could actually cook these for quite a long time. So it's a dish that you could get on first thing in the morning and allow to kind of slowly cook leading up to lunchtime or however you, um, you know, prep your, you know, stagger your time, but allow a lot of time and slow, gentle cooking. So beans in the pan. Um, and then um, I cooked off this morning or just earlier as well, onions and garlic. So that's like a whole onion and um, a couple of cloves of garlic. And just to say again, all our recipes, um, but yeah, anybody uh, that's new, we always work uh, for 10 primary school portions. Um, so yeah, this is gonna serve, uh, serve 10. So it's our onions, garlic, beans, uh, and then in here I've got tomato um, puree and a little bit of tomato ke ketchup, which is again, just a really easy way to bring in that kind of sweetness, sweet tomato taste that goes into the pot. And then uh, our vegetable stock. To go over. Okay, and then you've got, um, you know, we kept ours very simple, just a kind of tomato, the onion -y sauce, but you've got options, you know, of adding things in like smoked paprika or bay or, um, uh, you know, some dry thyme or other herbs as well. Um, and then, you know, you could definitely play around with other types of beans as well. So what I'm going to do, because this, I'm going to give this the, the length of the workshop to cook. Just going to mix that all together. And then we, the, I want the beans to just start to take on that lovely kind of oniony, tomato -y sauce as they start to cook. They look great, Polly. Can I say yes. something exciting about these beans? Is the Sorry. Can I share some exciting yes, facts? Yes, please. I've got to share it. <clears throat> so um, dry uh, harigo beans, which is what kind of beans those are, provide uh, 21.5 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs, 2.4 grams of fiber, 1.5 grams of fat per 100 grams of dried beans. They're high in antioxidants, which, as you know, protect your body cells from free radical damage yeah thanks Alex well that's it the thing that they just are such an incredible ingredient so so nutritious um so yeah really great that um yeah our baked beans will be super baked beans um really really good for for the children um okay so that's our baked beans on uh going to move on to our second recipe um, which is a personal favorite of mine I'm really excited about it because it's a, a dal recipe and um, we've called it our curry club dal with toasted chickpeas and coriander yogurt and um, I'm sure lots of you know um, I've just seen a, a comment from Sarah yeah we can get the stats um uh, for the work workshop we can follow up with those um definitely afterwards um yeah the dal i love i love dal so so much um and really looking at the kind of indian uh culture culinary culture uh, where lentils um beans legumes are such a staple and i think there's such a big opportunity to kind of learn there and i think um yeah, it is, you know, dolls um, are really, really popular with children. Like we know that, I know that myself um, as a parent, cooking for my own children and seeing, you know, other families that th these dishes are um, ones that children really love. Um, and we start to see them on school menus as well. Um, so really, really brilliant. Um, we're going to do our dal today um, with um, chana dal. So, um, Oh, chana dal is basically um, split chickpeas. So I'll bring these really close 
a little a bit like what we have uh, the yellow split peas which we have in the UK and green split peas it's just the, the whole dried chickpea is just split and so it cooks quicker it also kind of gets a really lovely creamy um, texture again similar to the bean stats that Alex just ran um, our curry club dal um, is really delivers on protein um, as well in fact Alex do you want to you've got the the, the well, stuff i was hoping you were going to invite me to rattle really? it. i'll put it back in the chat for everyone but okay. chickpeas pack key vitamins minerals and of course antioxidants um <clears throat> this is a, i'm afraid a cup cooked portion uh rather than 100 grams but for a cup one cup cooked portion <clears throat> they supply a significant amount of the daily uh value of manganese which helps make energy protect cells, build and maintain strong bones and support the immune system. They also have folate, iron, magnesium, potassium, and zinc. And of course, uh, they have lots of those antioxidants, which I did already mention. I'll put that in the chat as well, so you can just- Thank you. Okay, so we'll take our, um, our split chickpeas. Uh, and just like, exactly like I said, with the beans, again, giving them a really good wash under cold water. Um, these don't require as much soaking because they're obviously a lot smaller. Um, so they can actually be cooked from scratch. It takes kind of about an hour. Um, but everything always benefits from soaking as well. So you could soak these for an hour before you kind of come to cook and it will just speed up the process. So that's our um, uh, main star of the show ingredient, um, the chickpeas. Um, and I, yeah, um, about an hour ago before the workshop started cooking them. So I'll bring them up for you to have a look. Lots of steam. Uh, but again, they've uh, probably doubled in size. Um, they've absorbed lots of the water. Um, they're just in there with water and a little bit of turmeric to start giving um, the yellow colour. And I'll just show you with this little spoon that at this stage now they're very, very soft. Oops, <laughs> Oops they jumped off my spoon, but they just can go down to a paste really, really easily. So they're going to be, that's, that's going to be um, the base of our dish, this lovely kind of creamy, very, very soft um, chickpeas. I'm just going to keep those simmering away on the back. And then what I'm going to add to that is what they would kind of traditionally do in India, with a dal is the kind of the taka part, which is where you cook up some spices and we're going to do tomatoes, ginger and garlic and get this really, really lovely um, flavour hit that you're then going to add into the uh, to the chana and that's going to kind of season it all through. So again, really, really easy and uh, quick to make um, this part anyway, once you've uh, got your, your chana ready. So just into my pan, I'm just going to put a tablespoon of oil and start to heat that up. And then I'm going to bring to show you um, but there's very simple um, spices. Um, and again, like all about the kind of flavour from the tomatoes, the garlic and ginger. So I'm going to start off uh, frying off some cumin seeds uh, and then I've got ground coriander. The tiniest, tiniest amount of chilli powder, mild chilli powder, which is optional, um, you know, to you, if not this, then I would perhaps recommend some paprika, just to bring in that kind of smoky taste. And then our tomatoes, uh, garlic and ginger. So, going, I'm going to just pop my cumin seeds in, first of all, get them sizzling. Okay, and then uh, they start to, to go. I'm going to add in my tomatoes, my garlic and my ginger. We can almost smell it there, Polly. Yeah, it smells really good. And like I said, it is a real kind of personal favourite. I'm just going to get the heat up on those so that they break down uh, into like a lovely kind of sweet tomato sweet spicy tomato paste. So while they're cooking, I'll, I'll add the other the dry spices as well. Just add everything in. And our chana dal is only 37p per portion, <clears throat> which delivers 9.4 grams of fibre, 
9.6 grams of protein, omega-3, iron, and zinc. Yeah, the problem, sorry, I, I, I made a slight mistake there. I should have added my onions in first. Um, I think it's just that time of the day I can suddenly score them on the side. They should have gone into the pan first, but it's okay. They can go in now with the tomatoes and uh, let the, that cook down all together. So I'll just give that another minute. Never worry with these dishes, with all our recipes, um, they're very forgiving. Um, and obviously, I'm talking you through them to try and get the best kind of out of them as possible. But small things like that don't matter. Um, ultimately, they're all going to go in and season the chickpeas. Let's give that a minute. Um, while they're cooking, I'm going to show you the crispy chickpeas that we do to, to kind of as a garnish to go on top. Um, and again, it's just about having lots of fun with different textures. That's the other really amazing thing about lentils and uh, beans is that they've got so many different uh, options with textures. You know, if you want to, them to be very, very smooth, if you want them to be very, very creamy, if you want them to be, in this case, kind of crunchy, um, if you want them to be mashed. So it's really about things like choosing which ingredient you want to use and then thinking like of the best bits of that ingredient that you can pull out and how it can work the best for you. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do for this is to tip into my oven dish uh, chickpeas and then I'm going to season them with um, kind of a teaspoon of garam masala. So just roughly judge, tip that over. A little a bit of salt, a half a teaspoon. And then again, just a tiny drizzle of, of oil to go over. And mix that all together. And these will basically go into the oven at kind of 180 and cook anywhere between kind of 10 to 20 minutes, they'll start to kind of dry out and crisp them. They're great to use, yeah, as a garnish for like this curry that we're doing, but really good in salads as well. Um, it's just, as I said, really nice contrasting texture and they're very Moorish and, and delicious. So it's just, I think, thinking about with children in school food, all these different ways that you can just kind of pull them in and perhaps they've tasted chickpeas, you know, one way boiled or something, they weren't as keen, but they try it here and they really enjoy that. So I'm going to pop those into the oven and they're going to garnish our curry. And this is all cooking down really lovely. Smells so good, the ginger smells delicious. And our beans at the back are bubbling away as well. So I'll just give those a nice mix as well. But I can see that they're really soaking up that uh, tomato sauce. Do you, um, do you need to dry the chickpeas at all before you pop them in the oven for the toasted chickpeas? Or So, yeah, I had those were tin chickpeas that I used. So I had taken them out of the tin, yeah, pressed them with a little bit of kitchen paper, um, basically, the drier they are when they go in, the less cooking time. So if your chickpeas are a little bit wet, then they'll just take a bit longer to cook. Um, but that's, uh, you know, just kind of another five minutes or something. But, you know, they're still crisp enough eventually. Right, I'm going to just let that continue to cook, the tomatoes and the onions for the chamadal. Looks really good. But they just need another, another kind of minute. And uh, while they're um, cooking, I will start on the creamy pot pie, which is another new uh, school plate recipe coming out in our next uh, recipe book. Uh, and this is a really kind of epic, um, you know, a pie is a dish that we see on a lot of school menus, um, particularly up in Scotland where I am. It's kind of quite a staple dish. And so we were looking at how we can do um, our own kind of plant-based version uh, that still kind of has that really uh, rustic heartiness to it and um, that is great for children to try something different that's much healthier and much lighter 
And our secret ingredient in this is our but butter bean sauce, which is our kind of creamy sauce um, that uh, kind of coats all the vegetables. So um, bring over the ingredients for this. And we've got our butter beans. Um, and then lots and lots of vegetables. And we're gonna use some corn pieces in this as well. Um, kind of, you know, in spirit of like a chicken pie, like a creamy, sweet, corny um, vibe that we're going for. But um, so we've used some corn pieces as well. But again, because we've got the butter beans in, we, we don't have to kind of use as much corn as well, which is good because it's expensive and, you know, it's a more processed ingredient as well. Um, so I'm going to start this off. Holly, shall I do the second poll? Let's do the second poll. Go for it, Alex. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's do the second poll. I'm just poll. so excited to do the poll. Love doing the poll. Um, so can you tell us, <clears throat> you know, globally, pulses and beans are a staple of children's diets as they're nutritionally dense, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> cost-effective and delicious. Do your children enjoy them currently? <clears throat> And if they don't so much, then what are the barriers preventing you from using them more? <clears throat> and here are the answers. Yeah, 15% say yes, they do enjoy them, but 85% not really, not really yet. So this is a challenge, isn't it, to us all? Um, and what are the barriers preventing you from using them more? <clears throat> Excuse me, don't have enough lentil and bean recipes. That's 46% of people said that. And other people are going to comment in the chat about what might be preventing them. Um, from using thank you. Us. Yeah, thanks for sharing that because it is really uh, useful for us as well um, in terms of like thinking how we can best support you. I mean, it's really interesting. Obviously, that's a really high statistic thinking that, you know, it's not um, something that children enjoy so much. Sorry, someone just posted in the chat about it. Um, oh, uh, Anna just commented um, that lentils and beans are staple in, in their Indian home cooking. Yeah, and uh, and Catherine said lots of children's are, children aren't really used to eating them at home, and Isabella thought well children just don't want to try them, <laughs> and, and Steph said that their children like baked beans and the reduced salt and sugar ones, and most lentil and bean recipes are enjoyed by staff and a small handful of true veggie children. It says. Okay. Um, Catherine's mentioned about introducing them in familiar dishes. Yeah, which I think is a really good way to do it. And I think that is our mission, you know, here at School Plate is definitely how to make them as enjoyable for children, how they get used to those ingredients um, and, yeah, eating more of them. Um, so, yeah, really uh, useful to kind of hear uh, from you on it. And, yeah, I think it's just about... Um, familiarity there's a really interesting one here um they don't eat them at home except baked beans most see it as veggie and are of the opinion no meat no meal <laughs> so that's interesting isn't it and then yeah. carolina says they like them when they're hidden so this pie uh, they might like this yeah, the pie, yeah i guess that's what thinking behind the pie was um, you know, we try and uh, yeah introduce them in a way where I mean the dish, the focus of the dish isn't about the bean, but the bean is in there and the bean is doing its work to make a delicious creamy sauce. So I'm just going to quickly because I've started on the recipe, just tell you what I'm doing. I'm sweating down uh, leeks and mushrooms just to get a lot of flavour. That's going to be the base of our um of our pie. You know, lovely. Just starting to get um that depth of flavour from those ingredients. And then here in my bowl, I've got grated carrots and um, sweet corn. So it was the idea of, you know, like a creamy um, sauce with some sweet corn in it, which is really delicious. And we know children really love um, 
you know, sweet corn and carrot is a really popular ingredient. So I'm going to put my corn pieces in as well. I'm going to show you the filling. And then our sauce. So our butter beans, our styles of the show beans, um, on this one, which we use in a lot of our school plates recipes because they just give the most creamiest texture and uh, yeah, blend in really well. And um, so butter beans, then um, I've got some uh, plant milk alternative going in there. And in this little tub, I've got uh, the nutritional yeast that we use again a lot to kind of fortify foods and give um, lots of flavor as well. I've got onion powder, garlic powder, and I've got some salt. So that's going in there. And I'm going to just quickly whiz this together. It's going to make a lovely creamy sauce. So just bear with me. Just, just be a second. Whilst Polly's just zizzing over there, of course, you know I'm going to come back uh, with some butter bean <laughs> facts. And here they are. They're a source of potassium, magnesium, folate, iron and zinc. And they also contain calcium and, of course, protein. And what we love about them and Polly loves about them is that you can create a nice creamy sauce so easily with them. Um, you wouldn't even know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, mushrooms, leeks, carrots, sweet corn, and the corn pieces as well uh, in there. So mixing that all together, really lovely kind of really great texture. And then this is our butter bean sauce, which is the creamy sauce, which is going to go in over everything. And I've got some mixed, dry mixed herbs here as well, just to put that in for flavour. And I'm going to just mix that and you can just see it just coats everything. It smells so good, really kind of lovely creamy pie. And that is our pie filling. And then that goes into a pie dish um, and you've got options then of what to top it. You could top it with some mashed potato. You could top it with a um, lovely like sliced raw potato and sweet, you know, that kind of um, topping or um, what we've done for this one we've gone for classic puff pastry and I've got one in the oven that I uh, made earlier to show you it come out oh, my cloth. here we are our creamy pot pie so uh, with the pastry you topping and I'll just pour a slice of that up for you to see I like to turn up the volume now. Yeah, oh, it's so good. So again, just a really lovely, hearty, quite classic trad traditional pie, but yeah, all um, plant-based, so it will be enjoyed by, by everybody. Um, pop that onto the plate now. Let's try and get you to see some of that filling inside. Not really how well you can see that, but it's lovely. It's creamy. Um, it's got the the beans in there, the sweet corn, the carrot, and then that could be you know served with um a little bit of mashed potato, uh, some peas, that kind of thing. So that is our cream pot pie. First dish out. I'll pop this over here. I'm going to come back to finishing off our chana dal as well. And now my tomatoes and onions have cooked down. Um, so back, yes, I said the lovely, lovely uh, cooked out chana. Um, I'm going to just blitz my tomato and onions, which have now softened over here. Again, just bear with me a second. Split those. Oh, Polly, can you just repeat how you did the sauce, as Bella has said? For the for the for the dal, so it's I the tomatoes, the onions, garlic, ginger, um, and then ground coriander, uh, garam masala, 
um, so, cumin seed. Oh, for the pie, oh, for the pie. Yeah, well, yeah, I just spotted that, yeah, pie. <laughs> okay, yeah, That's let me just, I'll, I'll this in and then I'll talk you through the pie again. Okay, so that was the, uh, yeah, the, the chamadal, the tomato paste, which is just going to season all of the lovely um, creamy uh, chana. Mix that all together. It smells so good. And then I'm going to just serve this up with some brown rice. Brown rice. Lovely spoonful of chana. And then not forgetting in the oven, I've got our crispy chickpeas. Um, yeah, I shot the ones that I'd already crisped earlier. Oh, here they are. Here they are. My crispy chickpeas. These are the ones that I'd done earlier. And they will just sprinkle over the top just to have a nice bit of crunch. Um, and then I'm going to serve this with some coriander yogurt, a little bit of plant yogurt with uh, some chopped coriander through it. Gorgeous. And a little some fresh tomato on the side as well. So that's again a really, really simple, healthy, uh, tasty curry dish. Oh, it's beautiful. And that's our dal. And yeah, the pie, the sauce for the pie, so it's the butter beans, 400 grams of butter beans, uh, 400 grams of uh, plant milk. Um, and then I had the nutritional yeast, onion and garlic powder, salt, and some herb, dried herbs and salt all just whizzed together um, and then that's that was the sauce that kind of coated everything um great okay so that's our dal our pie and um, i'm now going to just show you quickly um very quickly um our uh red lentil um uh hummus so it's we call it our lemon and garlic dip um and yeah instead of just making it a uh, kind of Hummus with chickpeas, we're going to do it with the red lentils, which gives a really, really lovely creamy um, texture. Um, just looking for my lemons. So yes. all I've done... Lentils, isn't it? They, they do go really creamy when you... They go, yeah, they go really creamy. So it's just another nice thing to do with red lentils. Um, we serve this, um, we've kind of got a selection of dips, um, you know, with... Uh, crudités and pita bread and oat cakes and that kind of thing. So it works really, really well and uh, uh, for children just to kind of have a small taste of something. Um, again, just to mention, you know, in Scotland, um, you know, where I'm based, we, you know, the, the red lentil soup is such a popular dish with children and with a lot of the local authorities I work with, you know, that is... Um, yeah, one of the most loved dishes on school menus, and that's really nice to see. Again, it's something children are used to having at home. Um, again, but just yeah, really, really economical um, and nutritious. So, seasoned my lentils with lemon juice. Then I've got some olive oil, um, some garlic powder, and as I said, a little bit of turmeric going in there. And then it's going to be another. Um, I'm going to just whiz again, whiz this together. Again, another real kind of staple part of our school plate recipes is a lot of stick blending and whizzing um, just to get, yeah, these, these textures. Here we go. I've just spotted there's um, St. Michael's School in Flanelli here. So welcome, Owen. I think you might be our only visitor from from Wales. It's very exciting. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, individual schools, by the way, don't forget you can also apply for a board with us. So just send us your menu if you want to. I'm going to just stop that there. Um, if I could go on blending that for another minute or so. And it's not the most interesting thing to watch, but you could take this even smoother and left it fairly um, chunky. Again, just this really like lovely light hummus with the red lentils. Um, 
like I said, I've given it a little bit of color with the turmeric, but I might go for a little bit more just to get that kind of yellow, really bright yellow to it. Together. And then it's got the lemon in it as well, which is the kind of the main thing that you can taste. And then I've served this, I've got a place over here, just like I was talking about with the kind of dips. So we've got some nice crunchy cucumber, some oat cakes, and then we'll just put a lovely little spoon of our red lentil hummus. And it's a great base for, you know, you could have, um, add some other color to it, uh, like uh, beetroot or carrot or green pea. So there we go, that is a uh, lovely kind of little dip plate for children to have as well as um, a starter or to try um, try something new. Um, colourful, different colours, also attractive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, that yeah, the lentils are just such a good base um, for that. I'm going to come back to our the baked beans now as well. Everything kind of all ready now, <laughs> kind of come together at the end. You make so, it look so effortless, Polly. Oh, good, good. You never quite know the timings of how things are going to go on the day, uh, but I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that it's coming across with with ease. Um, so these are now soaked up the tomatoes, they've soaked up the onions, really, really delicious. And I've just got a nice piece of toast here to serve a nice portion. Who doesn't love beans on toast? It's the best. Do you have yours on your toast or on the side? That's my big question for everyone. <laughs> I definitely go on the toast. Um, I love it when it soaks in. And then I've got a little bit of... Um, uh, plant cheese as well just to go on top because I like a kind of cheesy beans on toast. Beautiful. Okay so that's our lovely yeah homemade um beans on toast. Um now uh, last few minutes I'm gonna look quickly at our uh, dessert which is a school plates classic uh, it's our chocolate brownie recipe um, which is in our first recipe guide. Um, I'm sure probably many of you have maybe seen this recipe before, perhaps, but I thought it was just a great one to demo today. Again, uh, for anybody that's not seen it, and also just because it's using beans uh, in the dessert. Um, so, which again, uh, just shows, you know, that they are really, really versatile. Um, and with this recipe, it's the black bean. So I mentioned earlier, they kind of have a sweetness and a creaminess to their texture. So um, in our bowl, uh, I've got a plain flour, cocoa powder, some sugar, um, a little bit of baking powder. I'm going to add in our black beans. Now you've got um, options. Uh, you can keep them whole in. They actually... Uh, have quite a pleasing texture but you can also mash them up as well if it's something that you want to hide in there and then I've got um, some grated beetroot as well um, which brings a uh, natural sweetness to it and um, I made these yesterday uh, for my kids um, just because I was getting ready for the workshop and my son was really like oh is it strawberry in there and I think he was referring to like the, the what the beetroot kind of brought in with its um you know sweetness. So that was really nice. Um it yeah, works really well. Oh <laughs> sorry. So all of these ingredients in together, whisks on, and then just very simply whisk it all together. So I didn't want to take up Polly time because she's getting it all done just in with moments to spare. But you can see in the chat, I've just posted some uh, more facts. It's not an ank steak. It's meant to say as much iron as a steak. <laughs> Thank you. Stick okay, around for our last poll in a minute, everyone. Yeah, that's it. Our lovely um, chocolatey mixture which then just goes into a uh, prepared tin 
I'll just talk you through the last step because we're coming to the end of the workshop. But then into, you know, an oven 180 uh, for kind of 15, 20 minutes. Um, but I have got um, here a lovely pile of them, the ones that I uh, made yesterday to prepare for today. So it comes out with a really lovely fudgy chocolate brownie. It's got little bits of black bean in it, which just gives, as I said, a really nice texture. And the beetroot gives a really nice color as well. So that is our um yeah brilliant beans dessert there um yeah uh, chocolate brownies shall we go to our last poll question alex yes please last poll question really quickly which of the dishes you've seen today would you be most likely to try okay let us know whilst you're doing that and just to bring it all to a close i want to thank you all for coming and polly for doing amazing a uh, very speedy presentation of it, of it all. Um, it's been brilliant. Uh, so keep your finger on the pulse as we come back again next month for our next online workshop in February. And it'll be all about grab and go. Okay, the answers are in. And you said you're most likely to try the chocolate brownie. <laughs> is that because it's nearly tea time? Um, and then following that, the next most popular one with the Thai is the dal and the creamy pot pie, which has already had a comment that it might be something really that goes down well. And the lemon and garlic dip is next. And finally, the homemade baked beans uh, uh, came, came bottom of the list this time. Um, so... Hey, thanks everybody. Thank you so much for joining in on the chats. And if there's any other questions, we yeah, can get back to you after. We'll get back to you, but there is, we're going to get the recipe book um, on our website soon and you'll be able to download it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> thanks, Kirsty. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.